Hey, it's all with some more Shadowlands coverage. Today I'm going to cover cooking and I guess fishing too, so I can answer the question, is this gonna make money? Let's start off by first talking about fishing, which so far seems to be a very, a very straightforward profession in Shadowlands, which is also to say that it's not super exciting either. Don't fret over ocean versus freshwater fish, they're simply divided by zone. Let's take a look at the fish. The Lost Soul is the common fish found in any zone. The Elysian Thade is like the Midnight Salmon of Shadowlands, less common but also found in every zone, only without the variable drop rate based on the time of day. And the rest of the fish with their locations I'm just going to throw up on screen. There will be unique bait in Shadowlands to increase the rate of that specific fish appearing. Whether this leads up to anything more is nothing that I can confirm, and really that's outside the scope of this video anyway. Meanwhile, cooking meats aren't quite as zone specific, ribs or ribs, but the mob types that you're looking for can be more plentiful in one zone versus another. Now, all that said, let's move on to the cooking. Cooking in its current form is pretty simple in Shadowlands. At present, you have your basic food, your small buff food, your big buff food, special soul food, and feasts, with the expectation that more recipes will be added as the expansion rolls along. But also notice that like other professions, there are no more star ranks, which means you don't need to feel guilty about mass crafting before having rank 3 recipes. But it also means that the amount of product that you produce won't ever really change. What's worse is that most of the food you craft comes in threes, meaning you end up with either 18 or 21 food, which will annoy me to no end. But at any rate, this means the mass production of food will begin straight away, meaning selling cooking materials may be an even faster market than before, but of course, it depends on your realm. So let's skip over the cheap stuff that you'll just use for leveling and talk about the food that you'll be making the most of. The stat buff food is made with one type of meat, one type of fish, and a few goods that can be bought from a vendor, and like Battle for Azeroth, you can boost any of your secondary stats, as well as stamina. There are two kinds of feasts, the basic one, and the one that uses twice as many materials but gives more than twice the stat boost, which is nice. Now note the Elysian Thade requirement. I made some early observations while farming, I fished for about eh, like half an hour or so, and got enough Elysian Thade to make three feasts, which isn't so bad for what is supposed to be the bottleneck ingredient. Getting everything else though is a different story, but remember, beta. For context though, to make the top feast, you need this many materials, plus 10 of these amberjack cakes and banana beef pudding, mmm, <laughs> tasty. But since you can only craft 3 at a time, you're going to need enough materials to make 12 of these, or 4 casts. Yay. We can expect the recipe requirements, the drop rate of materials, or both to change before going live. What I'd really like them to change though, how much stuff you make. Come on, really? Three? Just change it to four and call it a day. But now for the favorite food, the soul food that will be favored for Mythic Plus players mostly. Quiet Hounds, well, Quiet Hounds just changes your form, whoop de doo Some other Chank deals a small amount of cone damage, maybe good for outdoor questing, but negligible anywhere else. Seraph Tenders is where we start getting serious. This will increase your out of combat regeneration by 2000 every five seconds and it goes up with versatility. This is not an insignificant number, so say goodbye for the most part to the Grievous affix. Fried Bonefish is supposed to be the next Bear Tartar, but is it? I did some digging and even then this is mostly an estimation. According to Tooltips, the Bonefish buff boosts your speed rating by 308 for 6 seconds at level 60. When using the good old Bear Tartar at level 60, you get a speed rating of 88, which equates to a roughly 6% increase. Based on this, and considering diminishing returns, I'm left to believe that Bonefish will grant a roughly 20-25% to 25 speed increase on kill for 6 seconds. So it's not the massive 70% speed increase during the glory days of Legion, but it's not the whipped 15% that came after the nerf. I think it's reasonable enough to consider using, but Seraph Tenders are definitely going to be a big winner during Grievous Weeks. That's about it, pretty short and sweet, so will cooking and fishing make money? I think so, but your realm is going to play a bigger factor than normal for these professions. Feasts require a whole lot of materials to make, and without ranks to lower the cost, they will always require this many materials. The prohibitive cost is likely to affect Elysian Thade, which has no other use other than feasts and could lower its value. 
but those are all things that can be tuned and adjusted before going live. The important thing though is that there will be food that is very high in demand, notably the Mythic Plus and the stat food. To make Seraph Tenders, you'll kill winged creatures for Seraphic Wings, and Silvergill Pike is found fishing in Bastion. Meanwhile, for fried bonefish, you'll be fishing in Maldraxxus and farming for creeping crawler meat. I'm no expert yet, but I recall a haunted forest full of spiders over in Revendreth. That's it for today, and I hope that this was helpful. If so, leave a like and subscribe for more of this and all things Warcraft. We'll see you next time. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay breezy. Thank you.